What's up, everybody? This is your boy Uber Hikari, aka the Nerd Nigga, here to bring you another video with no frills, just the analysis. And boy, man, y'all know what time it is. I told you I would do it, man. I told you I would do it. So it's time for that Shaman King Zero review. Yes, y'all know what time it is, baby. All right, so for those of you who know Shaman King and who have read the original Shaman King story, um, that came out, I believe, between the years of 1998 and 2004. This uh, chapter is, you know, a great reunion um, for people like me, you know. It was just awesome getting to see Yo again and just really getting to see how uh, Hiroyuki Takei has developed his, his storytelling skills and also his artwork in the last um, seven years because, um, you know, I haven't really... Uh, read anything else by him so it was it was just just a great all-around reunion and for those of you who you know are not familiar with Shaman King who haven't read it um, if you've read this you know Shaman King Zero story um, it's a beautiful introduction to uh, the work of Hiroyuki Takei and I mean I just have to say after reading this chapter you know that you're in the presence of a master you know, a, a master mangaka, somebody who is in full control of his ability as both an artist and as a storyteller. And um, it, after I finished reading this this chapter, I just I, I got shivers. It's like, you know, you, you can you can just feel it when you know the story is that good. Um, similar to how, you know, Kenshin, when he rose up after he chained the Sakabato shut and, and then he came, you know, rose up to go and save Yahiko. Or when, um, you know, uh, the Straw Hat Pirates are all, you know, standing up courageously, even though Nico Robin is telling them to, you know, leave, leave her alone. Uh, they still went and saved her. Um, this is the type of, you know, shivers I got from this chapter. And so it's, it's reminiscent of those scenes in, in, in other manga. And it was just, you know, an all around great story. Um, so basically how this is going to shape up is I'm just going to give you, um, a summary and an analysis of this chapter and try and, you know, combine the two. So give you some summary and then give you some analysis um, so that they go hand in hand. All right, so the, the chapter opens up with Yo sitting in Azumo, the Azumo train station. I have, you know, nowhere, no idea where that is in Japan, but that's where the, the initial setting for the story is. And also where um, a lot of the story gets told. And it's a beautiful color page of the inside of Izumo train station. And it is beautiful. And if any of you are familiar with the genres of art or painting, you'll immediately recognize that this is just... A, a, pr a very good example of photorealism. It took me a couple of couple of looks for me to to realize what was happening because the inside of the train station it really looks like a photograph, but it's it's not. It's actually um, drawn, and it just it looks it looks beautiful. Um, and so this sort of you know photorealism that we get in the opening scene or in the opening color page really sets the standard for the artwork that's to come in the rest of the 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 story. Um, and you can really tell that Takei is just interested in a certain standard of realism with respect to his artwork. And um, there's also a, uh, um, his ability to establish mood via the setting because we're initially inside of the train station, but we also get a, a scene where Yo is, we know he's talking to somebody, but we just get to see him sitting alone on a bench. And um, we get to see in the next page that, that he's actually not talking to a human, that he's talking to a ghost. And so we immediately get introduced to one of the motifs of this chapter, which is that Yo is, is basically alienated from the people around him. Um, he's both alienated from his family and he's alienated from uh, the people with whom he goes to school. And so the only bonds that he's able to create, at least in this, you know, one shot manga is between himself and a ghost. Although that changes as the story progresses, um, at least towards the end of the, this, this one shot manga. And it's basically, you know, that, that opening scene of him sitting at Uzumo train station is him reflecting on his own inadequacy, 
Um, and he's talking to this ghost and he tells the ghost that he doesn't think that he'll be able to become Shaman King. And that even if he does become Shaman King, the, the human race will become extinct. And he also talks about how, you know, he hates everyone. And for those of you who have read the, the original Shaman King, you'll know that there was a character named Hal. Um, who also, um, you know, detested human beings, who felt disgusted by human beings. And so we immediately get to see how this parallel is created between both Hal and Yo. And that makes sense given the fact that Hal is indeed one of um, Yo's uh, uh, ancestors, one of his ancient ancestors. And this feeling that Yo has of being alienated from people and also his hatred towards people um, is also confirmed later on in the story where um, I believe his grandfather makes a remark that, um, or maybe it's his grandmother, but one of them makes the remark that um, he possesses all of the qualities of Hal and therefore he possesses the power to defeat Hal. And so there's this tension created by the relationship, rather the familial relationship between Yo and Hal um, that gets played out at least a little bit and sort of introduces us, introduces the reader to the tension within Yo's character, um, at least with respect to his relationship to other human beings. Also, um, there's, there's something very interesting that happens in this opening scene in the train station where Yo is talking to um, this ghost. And that is, we get to see how Yo isn't, either he's not being truthful with the ghost when he tells her that he hates human beings, or he doesn't understand, he doesn't completely have um, a full grasp of his own emotions. Um, because he, he tells the ghost, um, he tells the ghost that, that she should leave the train station before his father comes and, you know, performs the exorcism that will send her to, um, you know, the, the afterlife. Um, the ghost is a, is an earthbound spirit and she doesn't want to leave until she's been reunited with the person, um, with whom she has that, that earthly connection. And he tells, Yo also tells her, so he tells her one, that she should leave before um, his grandfather shows up and exercises her. And two, he also tells her um, that, that, she, that her feelings towards this person could change, which could lead her to become a bad spirit. And so what we see here is even though Yo is telling this ghost that he hates human beings and that he detests them, um, he also um, establishes or at least shows the capacity for compassion. And so we get to see how there's this tension in his character and we get to see how um, there's, there's two aspects to his personality. One is that he has this um, seemingly amazing capacity to identify um, with a spirit and to, to offer compassion to the spirit, but we also get to see an aspect of his personality where he hates human beings. And so we get to see the juxtaposition of, of these two dimensions of his character. And we also get to see how he's we get to see how he's like Hal insofar as he has a hatred towards human beings, but we also get to see how he's different from Hal insofar as he has the capacity um, for compassion and he there's an at least this chance that he won't end up going down the same road that Hal went down. Also, um, Hiroyuki Takei, I mean, like I said before, you, you just get to see him, uh, you just get to see that you're, you're in the presence of a master, um, because the dialogue is just so good in this chapter. Um, it, there's a lot of emphasis on words rather than action, and so there's hardly any real action in this, this, um, chapter. Um, but we get to see, um, how Hiroyuki Takei has developed his craft, um, as a master of dialogue. And we get to see how um, his 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 external relationships, um, that is his relationship to those around him, are established through words, and rather than rather than his actions. And so there's this this powerful symbolism that's created um, within the context of Yo talking to this ghost at the train station, um, because the train station becomes symbolism for for Yo's transformation throughout the story. And so it forces the reader to ask the question of you know um, where is 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 Yo coming from and where is he going. 
Um, and so the train station is is very important symbolism um, within this within this one shot manga um, with respect to um, both the dialogue and the transformation um, within Yo that we get to experience in this chapter. And also, let me remark on on the the artwork in general throughout this chapter. Um, Hiroyuki Takei seems to be going for a style that combines simplicity of, you know, character design um, with detailed backgrounds. So when we see um, Yo sitting on the bench and talking to the ghost, there's this background where um, the train station is surrounded by shrubs and trees and also, you know, the building surrounding the train station. Um, but we also get to see, you know, little things that make the scene very realistic, such as the writing, which appears to be some sort of writing or graffiti on the bench. Um, and we also get to see like the, the, the metal of the train station. We get to see like the little, the little ribbits in the, in the metal of the train station. And Takei even goes so far as to draw with something which looks like rust on the, the metal, um, um, out of which the train station is made. And so he's going for, you know, like I said, com simplicity of character design combined with, you know, amazing details that establish the realism of the scene. So after um, Yo is talking, finishes his conversation with the ghost, he goes, he's um, on his way home. And um, we get to see also, again, in, with respect to, to, to Kay's artwork, we get to see that he's trying to establish a feeling that combines, like, you know, the urban landscape, um, you know, like the, the buildings, the train station, also um, to combine that with traditional Japanese environments. Um, and you can clearly see this in the stores that Yo passes. They're not like your, you know, traditional urban, you know, inner city stores, you know, the corner store that you go to. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but they have that feeling, that, that flea market feel to it. Um, so it has that, you know, traditional Japanese environment um, feel to it. And of course, you know, Yo lives in a traditional um, Japanese house. So, you know, there's also that aspect to the artwork as well. Um, and also, um, just how Yo is physically depicted um, in this, this manga. Um, he frequently appears, at least at the beginning of this manga, he frequently appears, you know, with his head down and he's wearing like this pack on his back. And so he's, you know, kind of hunched over. And um, it always appears like he's carrying, you know, a very heavy burden, um, which we find out is in fact the case. Um, so, so after the conversation at the train station, he goes home and, you know, typical yo, he's supposed to be training, but, you know, he skipped out on his training to go, you know, talk to a ghost at a train station and to, you know, listen to his music. And so there's this, um, this, the scene that happens at his house where, you know, the grandfather is saying, you know, I can't, he's talking to the grandmother and he's saying, you know, I can't force him to train to, you know, participate in the shaman fight. If he doesn't want to fight, I don't want to send him off to his death. Um, but then he also talks about how um, Yo has the responsibility of his familial legacy um, because the, the Asakura family has been, you know, waiting for the Shaman King fight for a thousand years. And so there's, you know, like I said before, this relationship that's established between, you know, how who's the ancestor and, you know, Yo, who's, you know, in the present. And we get to see how, you know, that heavy burden is weighing down um, Yo and, you know, how it, you know, actually has an effect um, on his psychology and the way he approaches the world. And so we get to see that, you know, this is a, a very heavy burden on, on Yo. Now here's the, the part that I think is, you know, one of the, the, that is probably the, the most amazing scene of, of this manga. And, um, which actually, you know, sets the standard for characterization and character development, um, for hopefully what will come uh, in the later months with um, the sequel to Shaman King, Shaman King Flowers. And uh, this is just, you know, very, very, very good writing um, on Hiroyuki Takei's part. Um, so there's this very interesting scene at the school um, where, where Yo is being picked on by a, a group of bullies. And while while this is happening to him, while he's being picked on by these bullies, he begins to meditate on um, human nature and on the nature of human society. 
And um, he really, he, he begins to think about how um, humans tend to group themselves, um, tend to create groups, and tend to enforce conformity on every member of that group. And, and we get to see that this is the, the origin or the beginnings of his, his hatred and his disgust for human beings. And so the, the bullies are picking on him and he's thinking about, you know, you know, uh, how they're picking on him and how they're trying to enforce conformity. Um, because, you know, he's a social outcast and he's, you know, really his own individual, um, which is, you know, how he was in the original Shaman King. And so he decides to just, you know, walk away from these bullies who are picking on him. But as he walks past, one of the bullies, you know, um, kind of knocks his backpack off and snatches his uh, headphones. He's listening uh, to some music, and music is a very important symbol in this this manga, and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but he's listening to some music, and so the bully snatches his headphones off and, you know, listens to, you know, what Yo's been listening to. And, of course, he says, you know, this is this is so bad. This, this music is, you know, horrible. And um, Yo's thinking to himself, and he says... Um, and this is a quote directly from the manga, um, at least in this translation. He says, um, if they, meaning humans, if they were only sheep, it'd be all right. But they're always so desperate to reject anything that they can't understand. And this is a very important quote um, within the context of, of this story um, and within this manga um, for two reasons. Two reasons why this is so important. The first is that we get to see how Yo is a little bit narcissistic or maybe even a little get, a little bit arrogant because we get to see that he, not only does he hate human beings and he feels disgusted by them um but he actually shows that he that he thinks at least in his mind how he's superior that he he believes that he's superior to other human beings so it isn't just that he hates human beings but that he feels he's superior to them which is again also um another Another striking resemblance to how, and we get to see how, you know, um, Yo could have gone down that road of hating human beings and wanting to destroy mankind. Um, but the second reason why this, this, this quote from Yo is so important is because it, it, it really allows you to think about human nature. And, and here's what I mean by this. Um, when humans are confronted with something that they don't understand, their initial reaction, and this is almost always the case, their, their immediate reaction is fear. Because, you know, humans by nature have a fear of the unknown. And what they do, because of that fear, they react by trying to reject that thing that they don't understand. And as a result of that, re that, that initial fear and that rejection, they develop a hate for the things that they don't understand. And so they begin to feel threatened by, um, by this thing that they don't understand. And so as a reaction, they have to hate it in order to, you know, um, in order to basically cope with the unknown, cope with this situation um, that they find themselves in. And I, I generally find this to be the case because human beings in general are, they, they see difference as threatening. And you see this even on a small scale and even on, you know, a more extreme scale. A small scale example of this is like the debate between, you know, Naruto and One Piece that happens in the anime community. Like if a person, you know, says, like, you know, I, I like One Piece more than I like Naruto, then the person who likes Naruto will immediately feel threatened by that, and they'll have to, you know, find all sorts of ways to justify Naruto. Um, they immediately, you know, get defensive, get reactionary, and, you know, feel threatened by the fact that, you know, someone likes One Piece more than, you know, they like Naruto. But a more, a large-scale, you know, example of this is, you know, take the example of homosexuality for um, as an example. Um, people who, you know, heterosexual people, even if they're around someone who's homosexual, like they immediately feel like their sexuality is being threatened just by being in the presence of someone who has a different sexual orientation than they do. And as a result, they reject it. And the next step, the even more extreme step after that is to develop a hatred. And so what, what Yo is thinking about within the context of this situation where he's being bullied is how is a couple of things. One of the things that he's thinking about is how conformity is in enforced 
um, within groups. So if you have a group of people who are, you know, who have the same taste, the same preferences, um, who are basically, you know, similar in every way, and they're confronted by a person who's different from them, even if it's just one individual, they automatically feel as if their group identity is threatened by the existence of this one person um, who's different from them. And, you know, this leads to, you know, a lot of times hatred, and it also leads to, to violence. Um, but it also um, allows us to think about how um, violence or hatred um, gets created within with within society, and it also allows us to think about you know not just how you know children are are bullied within school, but it also allows us to think about this on a larger scale that is within that's that is within the context of you know society or civilization, and so it allows us to think about the origin of discrimination and how people become you know social outcasts and how they they basically get you know shunned from 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 the larger society and so um yo gets the yo gets angry at them and as a result of getting angry at them he um attacks them i won't you know spoil you know how this happens um but there's a you know real situation of violence that's raised by this question of you know um how conformity gets enforced by certain groups and how certain groups uses use conformity um in order to you know um, hate people who are different from them and also use it as a justification for violence against people who are different from them. So after this scene at school, um, Yo comes, Yo goes back to the train station and he sort of, you know, recounts what happens to him, um, to, to his ghost who's, you know, now become his friend. And she listens to the, to the music that he was talking about um, and she, and this music, you know, her listening to this music, um, becomes a sort of segue into her backstory and, you know, I won't spoil the backstory. Um, but, but this is a very interesting, um, instance of how music becomes, um, also a symbol within this one shot manga. So the train station is an important symbolism because it gets us to think about, you know, the potential transformations within Yo's character, but music becomes a symbol for how that transformation gets played out within the context of the story. Um, so the music becomes important symbolism for how Yo is able to create relationships um, with other people and to sort of transform his hatred towards them um, into being able to, you know, like human beings or even love human beings. And one of the interesting things or one of the important things that the ghost that the ghost tells Yo is that music has no borders or sins. And so um it allows you to think about music in a very interesting way because music does two things which at first glance appear to be opposed to each other. Um, the first thing is that music is, is deeply implicated in um, social relationships and in social context. So think about jazz or blues, for example. Those are two genres of music that come out of a distinctly African-American context and yet um, the second aspect of music is that it, it transcends that context, and so it becomes universal. It allows people to establish relationships with each other that would not be possible um, in the absence of that music. Um, so music is at once a very important part of, of a social context, but on the other hand, it also transcends that context and allows people to establish relationships with each other. And what's also important about this scene is that um, we all we all know what you know what a shaman is. A shaman is supposed to be a person who bridges the spirit world and the human world. But we get to see another aspect of a shaman, um, which is that shamans aren't just about you know using spiritual energy to infuse an object so that you can you know engage in really cool fights or battles. But we get to see another aspect of a shaman, which is that. Within this situation, Yo is using this lesson that he's learned, you know, from a ghost from the spirit world um, to apply it to real world situations. And so we get to see how he's constantly as a shaman or, you know, 
um, developing, you know, the ideology of what a shaman means, you know, not just engaging in fights, but the actual spiritual um, importance of a shaman and what it means to live your life as a shaman. We get to see how in his personal relationships, he's constantly mediating um, between the spirit world on the one hand and the real world on the other hand. So after this scene where he, you know, goes back to the train station and talks to the ghost, um, we get, you know, another scene, which is really, you know, the climax of the story, which is that um, the grandfather finds out about the ghost at the train station. And he's been asked um, to, to exercise the ghost and to, to remove the ghost from the train station. But in the middle of the ritual, right when he's about to exercise the ghost, um, Yo appears um, on, you know, top of a train. And, and, um, he basically, you know, tells everybody the, the lesson that he's learned from this ghost, which is that, um, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically says that whether you like or hate something is a matter of your attitude. So basically what this means is that, um, he says, if you have a choice between liking something or hating something, then there's no use in harboring these negative emotions. And so um, it's our choice whether we love someone, whether we love someone or something, and whether we, whether we hate someone or we love someone. And that choice is rooted in our disposition towards life. And it's all about how we approach life. Now, of course, you know, it's not that simple. Um, there are some things that we hate just all of you know impulse um, but it does raise um, the, the interesting question that um, that your ability to change that your capacity for change and that your ability to become a new person is always rooted in the choices that you make and if you're willing to take that initial step that initial first step then there's always the potential or the possibility um, that you can transform yourself and transform the relationships that you have with other people and this this story um, that was told this this you know shaman King zero story is very very interesting for for, for figuring out why it is that Yo um, went down the path that he did and why Hal went down the path that he did. And it's very interesting, you know, you know, it's a very interesting aspect of character development um, for Yo in order to get to see how he was transformed by this experience and how this led to, to various um, points of characterization and character development for him. So, you know, overall, I think that this was just, you know, a beautiful chapter. And, you know, Hiro, Hiroyuki Takei is just a master manga mangaka. So overall, 10 out of 10, I would definitely recommend that you, you know, take the time to, to carefully read read um, uh, this Shaman King Zero story because I believe that the artwork is beautiful, the story is beautiful, and so this is your boy Uber Hikari, aka the Nerd Nigga, just brought you another video with no frills, just the analysis, peace, and have a blessed day.